So what we have below is a velocity time graph uh, that shows the motion of a ball thrown vertically downwards, right? From the top of a building and bouncing off the floor as it hits the ground. And then uh, we can ignore the effects of air friction. And then it's a mass that we take upward as positive. And then the first question, 3.1.1, says... Uh, Using equations of motion only, let's calculate the height from which the ball is thrown, right? So we are looking for delta y, the height at which uh, the ball is thrown. Uh, problem solving 101, we look at the information we have, right? And try use that information to find out what we don't have, right? So what information... Uh, do we have here at t is equal to zero uh, we have a velocity here uh, of which uh, the ball is thrown at right uh, so the velocity that we have here which will be our vi right uh, is given as minus 20 meters per second and then when the ball hits the ground it has a velocity of uh, minus 25 uh, meters per second right so we can say our vf in this instance would be minus 25 uh, meters per second, right? Uh, we know acceleration. We always know it's a constant, right? Uh, if we take in upward as positive, then our acceleration should be minus 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. So we have a VI, we have VF, uh, we have our acceleration, and we'll need delta Y, right? So which equation of motion has these four variables uh, that we can use? Uh, we know fully well that that equation uh, is VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2A delta Y. We have the acceleration, we have VI, we have VF. We're looking for delta Y, right? So what is VF? VF is minus 25, right? That's the velocity at which our object strikes the ground. And then VI is minus 20, the velocity at which it is thrown off the building, right? Uh, plus 2 multiplied by A. A is our gravitational acceleration, minus 9.8, right? And then we're looking for delta Y. So basically, the physics is done now. We are just solving the math. So we're going to have minus 25 uh, squared minus minus 20 squared being equals to 2 multiplied by minus 9.8 uh, delta y. We just took uh, minus 20 squared to the left hand side, right? So now it will be obvious what we're going to do. We're going to divide both sides by 2 multiplied by minus 9.8. So if we do that, uh, we're going to get uh, delta y being equals to minus 25 squared uh, minus minus 20 squared uh, everything divided by 2 multiplied by uh, minus 9.8 and then our delta y is equals to minus 11.48 uh, right uh, which is just 11.48 uh, meters so the height above the ground is 11.48 meters now we can do 3.1.2. Uh, 3.1.2 says uh, let's find the time t on the graph. So time t on the graph is here, right? So let's analyze our motion. Here at this point, the object is thrown downwards, right? And then at minus 25, it hits the ground. Uh, when it hits the ground, it bounces off with a velocity of 12 meters per second, right? Until it reaches its maximum height. So what we do here, we calculate the time uh, for this part of the motion from the moment it is thrown downwards to the moment it hits the ground. And after we're done with that, uh, we calculate the time from uh, the moment it leaves the ground to the maximum height which it reaches, right, when its velocity is equal to zero. So for that part of the motion, uh, we have VF, obviously, right? And then we have VI. Uh, we have A, uh, but then now we don't need delta Y. We already have it. We're looking for delta T, right? We want that time because that time, uh, delta T in our graph here, is the time from the instance the ball or the object is thrown downwards, right? Uh, so here for that first part of the motion, 
uh, we're gonna get vf is equals to vi plus a multiplied by delta t uh, what is vf minus 25 and what is vi uh, minus 20 uh, we know fully well what our acceleration is minus 9.8 and then multiply by delta t so we're gonna have uh, minus 25 uh, minus uh, minus 20 being equals to minus 9.8 multiply by delta t so we divide both sides by 9.8 right uh, if you do that you get uh, delta t uh, being equals to 0 0.5102 second right and then uh, we are done with that part of the motion now we need the part of the motion from uh, the time it leaves the ground uh, to the time it reaches its uh, maximum height right so what do we have there we have vi for that part of the motion and then uh, we have a vf right maximum height we know uh, the velocity is equal to zero and then we have the acceleration and we're looking for the time so uh, what is a vf in that instance uh, we're still using the same formula vf is equal to vi uh, plus a delta t uh, so vf is zero right uh, maximum height and then vi will be 12 here it is right 12 meters per second and it's positive because the object has left the ground it is now moving up uh, plus the acceleration which is minus 9.8 multiply by delta t uh, so you can see what we're gonna do here we're gonna take um 12 to the left hand side and divide both sides by 9.8 so delta t is going to be equals to minus 12 divided by minus 9.8 right and that will be equals to 1.2245 second right so now that time on our graph will be equals to at the time from uh here to here right uh, which is 0 0.51 and the time from here to here uh, which is 1.2245 so we add in the two we have 0 0.51 plus 1.2245 right and that should be equals to 1.7 three four five seconds three point one point three uh which says that uh let's determine using equations of motion the magnitude of the displacement of the ball from the moment it is thrown until time t so the ball is at some height right and then it is thrown downwards and then it hits the ground after it hits the ground obviously uh, it's gonna move up right and then it moves up uh, to some maximum height at the maximum height that's our time t at this instance we know the height the ball was thrown above the ground but we're looking for the displacement of the ball the change in position from the time it is thrown until it reaches maximum height this is the object's maximum height after it bounces off the ground right so we're basically looking for this part here this is the part we're looking for so if we find uh, this height from the ground to its maximum height then we're going to be able to calculate that displacement that we are looking for so what are we saying we know the height right uh, we know fully well that the height is at 11.48 meters uh, above the ground right now let's find uh the maximum height it reaches after the bounce right so uh we know very well that uh the vi uh, that it leaves the ground with is 12 meters per second and then the vf because it's at maximum height it's zero right and then uh, we know the acceleration but now we're looking for delta y and not delta t so which equation of motion can we use we're gonna use vf squared is equals to vi squared plus 2a delta y so vf squared uh, we have zero squared which is equals to vi squared so that's 12 squared plus 2 multiplied by minus 9.8 uh, delta y it should be obvious we're gonna take 12 squared to the left hand side and divide both sides uh, by this coefficient here if we do that uh, we're gonna get um, delta y being equals to minus 12 squared 
divided by 2 multiplied by 9.8 uh, this here is supposed to be a minus and then uh, the answer we get in is 7.3469 uh, meters right so now our displacement uh, will be equals to 11.48 uh, minus 7.3469 uh, which is equals to 4.1331 uh, meters right now we can move to 3.2 so 3.2 says uh, can you sketch a position versus time graph for the motion of the ball from the moment it is thrown until it reaches its maximum height from the bounce use the ground as the zero position right and then we must indicate uh, the height of which the ball is thrown and the time t right which is things we have calculated so let me just sketch our cartesian plane uh, so on the x-axis we have the time in second so on the y-axis we need uh, delta y uh, in meters right so let's start by indicating the maximum height uh, which it is thrown right so the maximum height we say is 11.48 yeah like we we've been saying we're moving from maximum height and then it is thrown downwards right and then it hits the ground and then it bounces until it reaches its uh, new maximum height right uh this height here uh we know fully well what it is uh 7.3469 and then the time here which is the time t uh, that we're supposed to indicate uh we just calculated it uh not long ago right 1.73 second 